welcome to Ilkley Moor. And here I am at the Cow and Calf Rocks. I'll have a better look at the cow and calf rocks when I finish the walk because hopefully the mist will have actually disappeared by then. For now, I'm going to walk across Ilkley Moor and down into Ilkley Town. Ilkley Moor in West Yorkshire is part of Rumbold's Moor, the moorland between Ilkley and Keithley. The moor, which rises to 1,319 feet above sea level, is well known as the inspiration for the Yorkshire County Anthem on Ilkley Moor Bar Tat, which is dialect for on Ilkley Moor without a hat. You'll have to bear with me today, I'm afraid. I seem to be going down with a cold. As soon as I got into bed last night, I suddenly developed a really sore throat, and that's been with me all through the night. So to be honest with you, I've not slept well at all. However, I am determined not to let this cold stop my enjoyment of my walk here on Ilkley Moor today. Ilkley Moor forms part of the South Pennine Moors site of special scientific interest. It also forms part of the South Pennine Moors special protection area and special area of conservation. My route across the moor was in the direction of White Wells. In 2008, Bradford Metropolitan District Council let out the grouse rights for Ilkley Moor. This move has led to controversy on the basis of its supposed impact on wildlife, walking, leisure and local tourism. On the 1st of December 1987, Philip Spencer, a retired policeman, saw and photographed what he believed was an alien being on the moor. He said he saw the strange creature rush up the hill and give a signal to him with one of its arms, as if telling him not to approach. He later saw a dome-topped craft at the top of the hill after following the being, which shot into the air at a blinding speed. The Daily Telegraph included this event in a 2011 list of top 10 UFO incidents in the UK. As I dropped below Ilkley Crags, I headed towards the next place of interest on my walk.
So here I am at White Wells. Situated on the lower slopes of Ilkley Moor is White Wells, an open-air spa bath built around 1700. The original open-air bath, situated to the rear of the current spa cottage, was built under the direction of the landowner, Peter Middleton. This was replaced in 1791 by two baths by Robert Dale, one of which is on display today. This plunge pool is used to welcome in the new year and is noted as the most popular day of the year for plunging. Dale placed an advert in the Leeds Intelligencer in April 1791, which made claims that the medicinal properties of the spore could heal bad eyes, tumours and sores, scrofula and all cases where the spine is affected. In 1793, a young visitor to White Wells, Anne Harper, the nine-year-old daughter of local butcher William Harper, drowned in the spa bath. There is a memorial plaque dedicated to her inside the current building. Well, I think it's time for me now to walk down into Ilkley. The spa town of Ilkley lies on the A65, which runs between Leeds and Kendal. The town is a tourist destination and is used as a base from which to explore the famous moor and the countryside beyond. The railway station lies on the Wharfdale line, along which trains connect Ilkley with Leeds and Bradford. Ilkley is a shopping town that sells everything from game, fine wine, expensive fashions and fine art. The Victorian parades of the Grove and Brook Street have a selection of speciality shops. The town's original Victorian arcade has been restored as an indoor shopping walkway, complete with a fountain and hanging baskets. The small independent shops include Lishman's of Ilkley, an award-winning butcher shop whose owner, David Lishman, became one of Rick Stein's superheroes in 2003. Ilkley is one of five towns to feature a Betty's Tea Room and is home to the Michelin-starred Box Tree Restaurant where Marco Pierre White trained. In 1991, Ilkley won the Entente Florale and in 1990 and 2004, the Britain in Bloom contest in the category of town. In 2006, Ilkley became a fair trade town. Ilkley has little by way of industry or commerce, but employers include the Walmart Company, Spooner Industries and NG Bailey. The town is also home to two breweries, Ilkley Brewery, situated on the outskirts, and Wharfdale Brewery, which is housed within the grounds of a former 18th century farmhouse in the town centre. The Manor House, one of the town's oldest buildings, houses a museum and art gallery. The museum contains prehistoric artefacts and documents the Roman fort of Olicana, remains of which are exposed at the back of the building, as well as the rise of Ilkley as a Victorian spa town. The town partially straddles the River Wharf in a valley, rising from the river at 230 feet to 650 feet above sea level up Ilkley Moor to the south and to 540 feet across Middleton Woods in the north. 
The river runs through the northern extent of the town, from west to east, and is crossed by four bridges. What a nice town Ilkley is. Very nice indeed. And I've encountered some really friendly people whilst I've been here. Well, it's time for me to head back onto Ilkley Moor. Leaving the town, I passed White Wells again, as I made my way back onto Ilkley Moor. made it to the top of Ilkley Moor now and isn't that a fantastic view absolutely wonderful now that the sun's come out and the mist is burning off slowly the views are absolutely amazing they really are oh well I'm just going to make my way slowly back towards Cow and Calf now That building to the left there is the Cow and Calf pub. A pint would really go down well now, but I don't think I would appreciate it the way I'm feeling at the moment. <laughs> Well, I'm back at the Cow and Calf car park where I started my walk. But before I move on for the day, I'm going to walk down to the Cow and Calf rocks to take a closer look. The famous Cow and Calf, also known as Hanging Stone Rocks, is a large rock formation consisting of an outcrop and boulder. The rocks are made of millstone grit, a variety of sandstone, and are so named because one is large with a smaller one sitting close to it, like a cow and calf. According to legend, the calf was split from the cow when the giant Rombold was fleeing an enemy and stamped on the rock as he leapt across the valley. The enemy, it is said, was his angry wife. She dropped the stones held in her skirt to form the local rock formation, the Skirt Full of Stones.
Well, I've touched the cow, so I can now say that I've been here properly. All I've got to do is go over and touch the calf. And that's the calf. Well, that's the end of my walk here on Ilkley Moor. And starting and ending the walk here at Cow and Calf Rocks has been a really lovely location. And I have been feeling a bit rough today with this cold that seems to be developing. However, as I said at the beginning, I was determined not to let it spoil my day, and it hasn't. It's been really nice. And bearing in mind that today is the last day in October, I have to say, weather-wise, I couldn't have had a better day. <laughs>